Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, we're obviously going to discuss the UTC and the journey that we've, we've all been on. So um, if I could, I'd like to introduce or get you to introduce yourselves, please, um, who you are, who you work for and, and what you do. So I'll start if I, if I may. My name is Andrew Stevens. I'm the CEO of CNET Training. Um, I've been involved with the UTC movement for, for a number of years um, and certainly very proud of what we've achieved. So if I could ask uh, Gail, could you please introduce yourself? Certainly. Hi, I'm Gail Stapleford and I head up the HR European team in Cyrus One. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mike, Mike Hook. Hi, Andrew. Yeah, um, just, uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, um, my name is Mike Hook and I'm the uh, owner manager of uh, LMG, um, a spy infrastructure provider. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Ricardo, if you would, please. Hi, everybody. Uh, Ricardo Degli Effetti. I'm the uh, operation, data center operation leader for uh, AWS in London. Wonderful. Thank you, Ricardo. And Paul, over to you. Hi, my name is Paul Hood. I'm the uh, COO for Yonder. Um, I manage global operations, health and safety and security um, here at Yonder. Thank you. And of course, last but not least, uh, Mike, if you could introduce yourself, please. Thanks, Andrew. I'm Mike Halliday. I'm the Head of Employer Engagement Strategy for the Activate Learning Education Trust, uh, which operates a number of educational institutions. One of them is UTC Heathrow, amongst other UTCs in the Thames Valley. Thanks for having us. Super, thanks very much. Um, Mike H, Mike Halliday, sorry, maybe I could give you, ask you to just do a brief introduction to UTCs and, and what they are, um, so people are understanding what the difference between what they would understand a traditional school stroke FE colleges, but what, what the UTCs offer. Thanks, Andrew. Yes. Um, a university technical college uh, is a relatively new educational model introduced in 2011 by Lord Baker as a response to the needs of industry. It educates uh, students primarily from the ages of 14 to 18, so they can leave mainstream education, where they undertake a very narrow selection of STEM specialist subjects related to the industries in their local region. Uh, these UTCs are all supported by industry where employers engage with them at some level or another to support the students in becoming ready for work. We now have 47 around the country uh, and they are going incredibly well. Thank you, Mike, thank you for that. Um, it's certainly something that I was really interested in. My personal journey followed going to an FE college, um, then going on to university and finding that university was really not the way that I wanted to, to learn. And over my career, I've looked back at that and often thought vocational education would have been the pathway for me. And I think many of us, when we talk about this industry, discuss how we fell into it. Um, we didn't follow necessarily the traditional route. Um, and I think we have challenges in front of us um, about retaining, recruiting, and developing talent within this industry because of the newness of it really, because we kept ourselves secret and um, because of the way it grows. So we've got a, a multitude of challenges um, surrounding our industry. Um, and this to me is really the first collaboration that the industry's had on actually tackling the, the skill shortage to try and create a model that can be replicated, that people, other people can use, and where we've really put our sort of companies and our competitive nature, um, you know, left it at the, on the street and we've gone in and then we've tried to work together and it's been very, very successful. So, you know, thank you very much for the support um, that you've shown to the UTC and Heathrow. Uh, we were afforded an opportunity, obviously um, with COVID, and the challenges that uh, UTC Heathrow faced around the aviation industry. Um, it was something that um, became a, a, an opportunity, but what is wonderful is that we've taken that opportunity. Um, I think the uniqueness of UTCs shows that they can move at pace. Um, we went from zero to end of the first year in, in what seems in a flash, um, and have all learned along the way. So um, the contribution from the partners is fantastic, and I, I thank you for that. Um, I'm going to ask some questions of you, really, and what we're trying to get a, a feel of is um, why we all got involved, what the challenges have been, um, what the outputs have been 
and what we've learned from it and and also more importantly what we think we've given to those students that are now exposed to this industry and i'm sure some of you have got some some tales so certainly i've been critical of the industry vocally in the past of people talking a lot and not doing a lot um, and i think the group of partners here have actually shown that to be not true now um, we did very little talking and we did a lot of working. So that's been um, that's been fantastic. So, you know, may I ask, um, first of all, uh, Ricardo, um, you know, why did your organization become a partner of the UTC? Fundamentally, because it's the right thing to do. Um, it was immediately clear, I think, to me and to and to all the people that were in, the, in that meeting uh, over a year ago, that we are all facing the same challenges. We are, like you said, a traditionally conservative and relatively secretive industry where we, we sort of tend to reinvent the wheel uh, more, more often than not. This was an opportunity to do the exact contrary, to, to join forces, to do something that would benefit us and other people in the industry as well for the foreseeable future. Um, so fundamentally, because it was the right thing. And, and in short term gain, uh, I, I, I saw an opportunity to to acquire um, talent uh, as well in the, in the short term, but but fundamentally, it's the, it's the long term benefit that, that attracted me personally. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you, um, Gail. I know that uh, Doris One, you know, had been a, a, a real supporter of this. And uh, why did why did you and your colleagues um, jump on the bandwagon so so easily and so readily? I think, well, I know that straight away we saw it as just a tremendous opportunity to look at our long term future, our industry's long term future. And to add on everything that Ricardo has just said, I think um, when I first heard about it, indeed, when Cyrus One first heard about it from um, yourself and, and Mike, it was like, if this ever comes off, and, and it was a big ask when we first heard about it. As you say, it's competitors working together, it's suppliers and customers working together, um, and, uh, and, and everybody in our industry knows one another. So when we first heard about it, it was that, well, if this ever comes off, it's going to be a real force to be reckoned with. And it's all about getting the word of the data center industry, our digital futures program, getting it out there because still so many people don't understand what data centers are and they don't understand the career opportunity within data centers. Um, and having UTC Heathrow um, as a vehicle, I guess, for um, all of us coming together and creating this real opportunity for, for the youngsters, but also for us and our employees who are supporting, right? Because um, a lot of um, the Cyrus One employees who have been involved with UTC have learned a lot for themselves. Um, it's done a lot for their own personal development. Um, not many of us are used to working with uh, young people of that age in terms of um, being in a classroom environment, sharing our skills um, and sharing information. Um, so that's been a real opportunity as well. And I just think, you know, if this is a, a, a program that could be extended, whether it's be in other UTCs or other further educational establishments, I just think it's, it could be so powerful. Um, so the easier answer to your original question, to be honest, is why not be involved, right? You'd be missing out if you weren't. Wonderful, thank you, Gail. Yeah, and that's that's um, that's very true. Uh, Mike, Mike Hook, you, uh, I know how much you've enjoyed this because we've spoken about it. So, um, you know, why did LMG see it as something? Because I know you said to me in the past that you you feel that you sit on the edge of the DC industry, maybe not at the heart of it as some people, but I think you have a valuable place. Yeah, I I, I was a little bit skeptical at the first at first when you when you spoke to me about it. I, I couldn't see how how competitors would collaborate because it's very strange in our industry to do that but the openness and the sort of like collaboration that everyone's provided has been sort of like yeah it's been quite awe-inspiring really and I think that the other thing for me is there's no losers there's no losers at all everyone's a winner um obviously from a personal company perspective obviously we get access to to, to potential new talent um we get our people developed in terms of the guys that i've sent and the, and the, and the, and the women i've sent to to run the workshops and things they've all come away with something extra um you know meeting other colleagues in in um in in the industry as well and and talking about other things outside that so it's been great for our company but also obviously talking about placements and and helping the helping the students it's been i think everyone that's been involved has been has been you know 
greatly enhanced by um, our experience. So for me, it's the fact that it's a win-win for, for all players and, and there's no downside. No, well, I would agree with that. Just before I come to you, Paul, I think one of the things that I've seen is how much it's benefited the industry mm, just yeah. by the fact it's shown that people can collaborate and it's actually good to talk. And whilst we're competitors in certain areas, that's just one part of the whole thing. And when people talk about legacy, you know, legacy doesn't come about by people just putting self in front of everyone else. It doesn't happen. And I think this is important. Paul, I know you've enjoyed it um, um, so far and, and that. So um, maybe tell us, you know, why uh, why you guys decided to, to jump on board. I, I think it's because you phone me every day for a month. <laughs> <laughs> no, all, all seriousness, um, I think, you know, you know, uh, you know, you personally, Andrew, know my, my story and, you know, my success, my personal success has been very much born out of vocational training and someone seeing something in me um, as a young 16 year old that wasn't the natural academic. But as soon as I, you know, um, jumped into a, a technical world and I was doing applied learning to the job that I was working in, um, my, my career just took off. And, and I think there are lots of people that think differently. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, academia is not always for everyone. And by giving people the opportunity to apply their theory to their practice, to a practical environment, um, is really key. And, and, you know, certainly the, the, the work that we've done with the students, um, you know, you, you see that, you know, you see those light bulbs in those workshops where, you know, naturally people gravitate into different groups and, you know, you get a mathematician that gets the calculator out, starts doing the numbers and there's another guy, you know, haggling, uh, you know, buying the equipment and all the things that we were doing. And it was really lovely to see it just happened. We didn't tell the students. So for me, it's been extremely valuable. And, and and echo what everyone else has said with regards to, you know, I know we're going to come on to this in more detail, but, the, you know, the, the value that my people have got out of this personally has been incredible. Brilliant. Thank you. Mike, maybe you could just touch for the viewers that are going to be looking at this. Um, the, the difference for UTC in terms of how much effort it puts into project-based learning, um, because obviously that's a key, key part of it. And you've had experience across the whole UTC network. So maybe you could explain, you know, that, 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 that core element for everyone. Yeah, it's a very good point. And I'm pleased that you've asked me to lead on that, Andrew, because for me, this is one of the, the real fundamental pillars of, of what makes technical education um, so valuable and so impactful on young people. Um, Project-based learning in, in the way that, that we look at it in UTC land, where we're delivering um, what many people call vocational qualifications like BTECs that are uh, sort of split up into units. Uh, a project is, is generally where uh, an industry partner picks up a BTEC unit and writes a project scope that covers the content that the kids have got to learn but presents it within the, a real world context so that students feel like they are applying themselves in a real world environment. Okay? And, and this, is a, this is a really critical difference in how we shape young people's interpretation of the world, uh, how, how they perceive that education as a journey. Right? And, and what I'm most proud of with the Digital Futures Programme is that um, you know, I think I think we've got 13 projects lined up for year 12 and year 13 students in the coming year with the new partners coming on. Um, <clears throat> having that being cohesively designed by an industry, um, you know, uh, promises an, an incredible learning journey for the students. Uh, for me, this is the biggest difference between uh, what you would see in a traditional FE college uh, or a sixth form uh, and what you're likely to experience in a, in a university technical college where you have employers embedded within the curriculum and providing that context. Um, you know, for me, the other element, which is somewhat softer, but, but actually has a lot more impact, is, is kids actually meeting real adults that are not teachers and not parents. You know, right? for any of us who remember what it was like being a teenager, you know, you listen to real adults a lot more than you did your mum or dad or your teacher. Um, and having you guys in the classroom is, is what makes the students sit up and listen, uh, apply themselves an awful lot more. Um, uh, and from a school's perspective, from a UTC perspective, behaviour gets better, attendance gets better, grades get better, performance gets better. 
And this is the difference uh, that industry in the classroom makes to a young person's life. Okay, thank you. And I think, you know, we must thank all the partners. And, and when you listen to the list of people, you know, this ourselves seen it training with obviously the smallest partner in here, but Yonda, LMG, CBRE, Cyrus One, AWS, ARC data centers and Virtus data centers. When you think about that list of people, I mean, what a fantastic opportunity it is for the UTC and for the children to be exposed to, to those. So thank you to all the partners. And as Mike alluded to, we do have a couple more coming on next year. So that in itself just shows the success of it. We've got some people that are coming on that sort of said, we can't do it now, but we really want to. Um, and they are, and it's great that, you know, we're able to carry on developing this. So, I mean, obviously we talked about um, a couple of parts of it, but let's just touch on what does it, uh, you know, what does it mean or what does it require from companies to be a partner at the UTC? And, you know, there is a financial contribution, which is, uh, you know, about £12,000. So I'm just going to park that because I think we all know that part of it and, and that's it. But from, from, from your perspective, um, when we discussed this project, we told you what we thought we was going to be to be a partner. But obviously we have a year of this now. So, so what is it, what is it required from your organization um, to actively be a partner in this? And Gail, I'm going to go to you first, if I could, to see, um, you know, what have the challenges been, but what have you delivered and, and what do you think it requires? So if we were talking to someone new thinking about it, what, what should they consider? So um, apart from the financial side, which you've already hit on, um, it's really a commitment of time and the resource. And it's it's choosing the right resource. It's um, it's trying to be planned in it. I will be absolutely honest and say it's been challenging at Cyrus One this year to try and get the right people doing the right thing at the right time because um, you know work life is busy, life is busy, um, and it's sometimes a challenge to to uh, fulfil those commitments. Um, it's it's very very doable, but it all takes planning and organising. Um, we have the most wonderful uh, coordinator at uh, the UTC um, and we all know who she is and we all know how wonderful she is and she is like a dog with a bone um, in a lovely way in terms of getting us all organized. It must be like herding cats a lot of the time um, because she's forever sort of telling us what we need to do at what time and, and what we need to do. I mean, there's so the the actual um, personal and you know employee involvement or business involvement is around physically attending the college at certain times, whether that's uh, an open evening, so talking to uh, prospective students and more importantly their parents. Um, so telling um, uh, sort of that pro pro prospect, I can't speak today, but prospective people um, joining the college as to what, what's available. There's also the commitment of doing um, the actual courses themselves. So a lot of uh, employers take a, a BTEC um, module, a unit, and they take control of that. And that involves preparing days and training plans and events and operations with that. There's also the, um, the non-educational side of things. So there's the, um, the help in standing, um, standing with a group of uh, students looking at CV skills, interviewing skills. So it's those soft skills that people need in order to move forward in the industry. Just talking about the industry as, as a whole. Um, what we've been able to do in Cyrus One as well is have the um, teachers and lecturers at UTC visit um, one of our uh, sites so that they know what it's all about. Um, because again, to my earlier point, people just don't always understand what data centers are. There's still perhaps a misapprehension that it's a, uh, a place full of people sitting inputting data, which couldn't be further from the truth as to what a, a, a modern day data center is. So investing in the, the teachers and the lecturers is to, so they can cascade that knowledge onto the students as well. And so that's what, what being a part of this program is all about. And of course, the more people that are part of it, the, the more opportunity there is for the students and the more um, in different types of culture and businesses they can be involved in because you know we're all a bit different we all have different ways of doing things and it's interesting for them to see as well how businesses operate differently and we're all very different sizes as well I mean you you get you know my colleagues at AWS or CBRE I mean they're a massive in comparison to the likes of Cyrus One and, and some of my other colleagues around uh, around this video now.
sorry, Paul. If you, have you got anything that you want to, to add to that in terms of you know the, being committed to it and, and what it requires? Yeah, and, and being completely candid, I think um, we here at Yonder completely underestimated the the planning that was required. Um, and you know, we we actually felt that you know between myself, Mustan, Phil, and Pascal, that you know we could just call it between ourselves and it'll be fine. Um, and, um, you know, we were a, a lot of the time, you know, I wasn't around because I was traveling and it was left to, you know, to, to the guys to deal with it. And, and I think we've made a, a firm commitment for next year that we've, you know, we've diarized everything already. We know where we are. We, we're not starting from nothing this time. Um, we've had the experiences. We know what the challenges are with, with the students. Um, I think we all learn an incredible amount of um, you know standing up and, and, and trying to deal with you know some disruptive students, some really smart students, and, and getting that balance um, you know was was difficult. And I'm not I'm not going to lie, it, it was it was really difficult, and, and we learned a lot from that. And um, you know we're really excited about next year, um, and I think you know certainly the the stuff that we've done that was really interactive around um, you know the project based stuff. Um, and really getting involved with the students and challenging them on a project over a few hours was was really good. And, and, and to Mike's point, I think us being a bit cheeky with them and challenging them, you know, and and, and kind of getting down with the with the, the young ones, as it were, was um, they they loved that and, and they really responded to that. And and you could see them, you know, trying to catch myself and Mustang out on a couple of those things, you know. Um, and I know that when, you know, when Phil and Mustang were, were doing the ops and the, you know, the, um, the escalation and within the data center, you know, they said there was always the, the students were trying to outsmart them, which was, which was really good. So, um, so yeah, that, that's, you know, some of the challenges that we had. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Um, Ricardo, you know, from, from your perspective, have you anything to add further to that? I know you've certainly enjoyed it personally. Very much. <laughs> It, uh, similar to, to my colleagues uh, here, uh, we, we underestimated it a bit. Um, we learned from it, as, as we often do, and, and we're going to be much more prepared this, this time. But even though it felt at times a bit of a stretch uh, uh, because we underestimated it, the, the, the balance was always in favor of, of, of what we were getting out of it. And, uh, and, and you know, like, like my colleagues already said, it's, uh, it's amazing to, to see a class of... Uh, of kids that initially not, not very interested in what you have to say, uh, all of a sudden be all over you and try to to ask questions and and you know it, it's it's so inspiring, so it's so rewarding really to 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 have that immediately tangible outcome after after you you do something. It's, uh, none of us is a teacher, at least I, I'm sure I'm not, and uh, and and it's, it's it's an experience that for me also is entirely new, and I I really really enjoyed it, and I know my colleagues. At AWS, did uh, had the same the same outcome and the same experience as me. So it's, it's all around good. Thank you, Ricardo. Mike, Mike Hook. I mean, I know um, you enjoyed it, but um, what 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 do you think? If you were to give someone some advice, as what does it require? What would you what would you say? As as everyone else has said, it's it's underestimating the actual commitment with respect to your own personal time and the and the and the time of key individuals, especially when you're you're a relative. You know, a small to medium size uh, size business but um you know I initially started off by throwing myself into it and then bullying people into doing it but as soon as as soon as, as soon as um the feedback started coming about what a great time people have had and, and the and, and the sort of like the the interaction with the students and the and the and the interesting challenges that we we we've all done um, you know, now I have to fight people off to actually get, they just want to get involved. And when I go out into industry events and everything else, like it's only, it's only stuff that people want to talk about. They don't want to talk about, you know, stuff, technical stuff, stuff with projects we're doing. They want to talk, what, what's, what we do at the UTC next year? You know, have you got any of these guys coming on? Are you taking any on? You know, they all, they all, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely caught the imagination of our industry. Brilliant. And I, and I fully agree with that. And I mean, I think, you know, thank you for being so candid and I think you, you're all being honest about the time commitment, but, but looking at you, you're all doing it with a smile on your face because we get so much back for it. We're actually putting effort into something and, and to hear that message from everybody. And we've experienced it myself. I had two of my people went down and did a CV day and, and normally they'd have gone home, you know, rather than come back into the office, they would have gone home. They came back into the office and they just wouldn't stop talking about how good it would be. 
as everyone said, it was challenging. It took a while for the room to warm up and things. But once they all started to get that interaction building and that sort of is true mentor mentorship, really. You know, they're learning, they're discovering the people and it's all, it's all about that. So it's been it's been fantastic. Um, so, so directly, um, apart from that one issue, what um, what benefits um, has your organisation seen from being involved? Um, Ricardo, I'll start with you. So, you know, what other benefits do you think that you know AWS has gained from being involved in the in the UTC? Well, tangibly and immediately, we 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 have two students uh, that are completing as we speak the, an, um, a work experience. Yeah. And without disclosing too much, I think they're gonna stay behind and and, and join us. Uh, for is it, you know it, that is that is the short term gain I was alluding to at the beginning. Yeah. You know, we 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 put some effort all of us collectively, and 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 in the end, uh, we we're, we're getting very good talent that uh, that is almost ready to hit the ground running and and to join an organization and, and be successful. So immediately that that is right. that, that is what we're getting. Yeah. Okay, great. Paul, what about you? What about Yonder? I, I would say at Yonder, um, taking the, the 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 subjects away from the students, I, I would say the thing that I've most got out of it personally, and looking at the people that we've been working on, is how we've all been taken outside of our comfort zone, um, and how we've all developed different skills ourselves. Um, and, and certainly, you know, putting um, Mustang um, front and centre of this was was something that I really wanted to do because, you know, he, he's a very smart guy, and um, you know, putting him into that putting him into that position and seeing him flourish has been has been has been incredible and really beneficial for us here at Yonder. Um, and um, you know, he's very happy to, you know, take this on again next year and and, and start pushing other people into it which is incredible. Something I never thought that would happen. It was just a, a, a real great byproduct of us, you know, getting something back from, you know, us putting effort into, into the students. So, you know, I want to say thank you for, you know, you know encouraging us to come into this because I think, you know, we, we will continue to see people flourish next year within our own organisation. And the moment stands already got people knocking on his door to try and help out um, next year, including, you know, sort of third party consultants that are working with us. Brilliant, thank you. Gail, how, how about for, uh, for Cyrus One? Um... So both of which the previous two gentlemen have, have said, certainly the employees who have been involved in delivering um, sessions at UTC have grown. Um, we have been inspired at Cyrus One to create our first um, traineeship um, for, to take ideally an individual from uh, UTC Heathrow into a two year training program. It's not quite a, an apprenticeship because the apprentice um, framework at the moment doesn't quite match what we're looking for, um, but it will do in the future, I know. But as early days, we're looking to um, we, to recruit two young people, um, you know, 18 to, to 22 year olds and put them on our own trainee training plan, which we've never done before. It's the first time we're gonna do it this year and it is inspired by um, the work that we've been doing with UTC. It's, it's, it's given us the motivation to, to get on with it, I think. And, and it's, you know, so far it's got some very good results. And I think as well, um, from a commercial and corporate perspective as a business, it's, it's saying we can put our money where our mouth is now in terms of trying to do something about the skill shortage. Um, it's something that we've talked about in our industry for a very, very long time. Um, and as an organization, we can say, well, this is what we're doing. We, we are trying to do along with our partners, along with our competitors, our customers and, and all of the other partners that are involved in this. This is what we're actually doing. Um, and this is a tangible something that we're able to support. Wonderful. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Mike, Mike, what about, uh, you know, the tangible benefits? And, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking at you because obviously supply chain to the industry, developing relationships, all those sorts of things. I think I think it, it, well as as well as to echo what the guys have said earlier on about the people who have got involved and how how it's developed them as as people. I think also it, you can't underestimate the the benefit it's added to our brand and the fact that our customers see us um, in a different light um, and that we are, as Ricardo said at the beginning, we are do it's the right thing to do. You know, it, it is about sustainable. It is about ethics. It's about it, it's 
it, it echoes many of the things of who we are and who we want to be and who we should be. Um, you know, and it, it just it just really does in, enhance our brand. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's the best value money we've ever spent. That's fantastic. And I think I think the thing that you know we've been able to do for the industry is show what doing rather than talking actually does. It can be done. We've taken we've taken a risk. We've 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 gone at it. The guidance of Mike and and Candice at, at UTC has been has been excellent. And I think that that genuine relationship of having a relationship manager, project manager in, in Candice is vital because I see in previous um, individual attempts of organisations to partner with colleges, companies don't know how to work with FE or schools. Schools don't know how to work with FE uh, with, um, with, with, with commercial partners. So you need someone to be that interaction. And I think that's been fantastic as well. I think also we don't necessarily appreciate the multiplier effect that this is having. You know, we may have 150 students in a year, but they have parents, they have friends, they have siblings, and they're all going to be going back and talking about this industry that they've never heard of before. They're excited about, and it's on, the, in many cases, on their on their doorstep. So, you know, very, very quickly, we're going to spread the message that this is an industry you know, or a destination of choice that does have fantastic people in it already, but also fantastic opportunities. And I think that's something that we, we we underestimate. So really the final question I've got for all of you, and some of you have touched on this and answered it. So, you know, please don't feel. Um, what are your company's plans to engage with the students once they, once they leave the UTC? Because I do see that as a, as a challenge for many organizations because lots of companies don't have what I would call pathways into their business. They have direct recruitment opportunities. We send a CV out, we interview someone, we bring them in, or we go and find someone with uh, transferable skills in, a, in an associate industry. But what we're having to do here is take people that have had some interaction, and, but it'll be quite good interaction, and bring them into our businesses, either as direct employees, as apprentices, as degree apprentices, as degree sponsored, whatever it might be. And there's lots of challenges. And, and I think we as an industry have to look at ways of trying to standardize that a bit so that we know how to develop people from those age groups, from those different um, backgrounds, you know, the exciting thing here is that we can start to really target diversity and inclusion because we're looking at a broad range of, of, of skill sets in these children at the UTC. You know, it's not a they're not a they're not a bubble. They 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 typically represent um, you know the demographic, and so we have a challenge. So it's an exciting one. So you know, what what are the company's plans to, to engage with people? Ricardo, obviously you you're some way down that road. So what other um, plans do you have? Which you know, I appreciate you're not going to share all of them because it may be getting into competitive areas here, but, um, you know, the ones you can share. No, the, 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 very simply, I think this year, what we're trying to do, we will try to do is to, to get a bit more involved in the work experience. Um, we, we had a meeting, as you all remember, uh, where we sort of planned the year ahead. And, and one of the things that I think there is an opportunity to do better is, is to get more involved in the, in the work experience. And we, we have full intention to do, to do that. That is, that is only one way, right? It's not, it's not going to fix everything, uh, but it's certainly going to be going to be something we're doing differently this year from, from, from an AWS point of view. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody else is on the same page as well. Yeah. I, I interestingly did have um, a call from um, one of the other partners uh, who said that one of the students' father had made contact and wanted to work in the business. So uh, I thought that's a bit, a bit of upselling going on there, which I hadn't expected. So that's uh, that, that's quite good. Um, Paul, what about um, Yonder's plans? And I know you've certainly been encouraging the supply chain um, to have a look at the whole project and, and, and support you. Yeah, I think what's really exciting for us is that... Um, we, we will be starting um, construction um, in that area um, um, back end of this year, early part of next year, uh, which will provide lots of opportunity um, for, for the students across uh, many different facets of our business. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, where we're currently located, you know, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a trek for, for, for the students. But um, going forward, um, you know, we, we will be we will have a live project over in that region, and um, uh, you know we will be working to see who we can bring in, and uh, as I said, not just you know give engineering, but you know right across our business, and you know everyone you know on the call here, and everyone that's going to be listening, 
knows around all the different skill sets that are involved in um, in managing, operating, building, developing a, a data center environment, and, and, and it's not just just engineers. So I'm really excited about that, and um, yeah, it, it, it's looking forward to next year. Okay, thanks. And Mike, Mike Hook. Yeah, I, I think it's um, obviously the way that we've talked with Candace and Mike about about um, virtual work placements and taking that on and developing that as a bit of a mixed bag of uh, some virtual because obviously we can't take uh, most of the students out onto construction site for, secu sec uh, for security and um, insurance purposes but to be able to do that virtually um, is, is, a, is a step in the right direction for us we can expand it to more people we can get more people involved give them wider experience not sitting there doing the filing or doing you know but give them a real experience of work and make them much more ready and I think it's then it's the apprenticeship route and working with our training partners as well uh, like yourselves to actually <laughs> Give them a give them a firm grounding for a career, um, in and working way up for our for our business. So, yeah, I, I, I you know I, I see it as a as a as a as a route into um to 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 solving the um the the, the, the skills shortage that we're all facing. Brilliant, thank you. And, and Gal, obviously, you know it's been inspired you with your traineeship program that you've got. Um, is there anything else you want to add on on onto that? I mean, I think as the, as the other guys have said, you know, getting more involved in the work experience opportunity as well. Um, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, th there, there is this um, need for the UTC to fulfill work experience for all of their students. Um, I, I, there's definitely year 13s and, and Mike Halliday will correct me, I think it's year 11s as well. But I, I know there is this sort of educational commitment that they need to do for that. And, and what better way to do it, to, you know, to, to use the partners for that work experience student placement to try and and keep that um that connection going and 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 you know Saris one are very keen to help and support with as much as they can do there as well whether it be virtually or on site um as much as we can um giving security and restrictions yeah. as well and and I think something that we perhaps haven't touched on and um it, that's important in this as well from a UTC perspective um I mean certainly when we were all together last the the figures that Candace was telling us in terms of the applications to UCT Heathrow this year have have doubled in in numbers I mean they they are significant their targets have been met and and I'd like to think that some of that is down to this digital future program I mean it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea but um, you know the success that UTC Heathrow seem to be building on from this is incredibly important as well and success breeds success right it's 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 been brilliant for them too thank you Mike can I just ask you to you know to touch on that because obviously you're the recipient Mike Halliday you're the recipient of all the support here that we've got but it is very much um, you know, still something that has to meet outcomes, deliverables, and all those sort of things from an academic purpose. So, you know, it clearly has been a good experience. And how's it been for the UTC? Yeah, you know, I, I think that there are a number of uh, points that really stand out. Um, in, in our first year, which, as I warned everyone, was going to be the steepest learning curve you've ever been through, regardless of, you know, whether you've built data centres in West Africa <laughs> or wherever, okay? Right. Um, yeah, the, the points really for me are, you know, two of those that were highlighted by Candace in our last partner meeting. Uh, the first of which is that uh, a whopping majority of students now consider apprenticeships to be their primary destination, their primary preferred destination. Right. These these are the students that a, one year, two years ago, 90 percent of them would be expecting to and aspiring to go to university okay as a result of having met hard-working adults people that have come up through industry right who have presented a uh, very very credible very successful very hard-working you know role models to the students this is totally turned on its head so, you know 80 percent plus of students now want to enter industry straight away following their engineering education at UTC. For me, this is phenomenal, okay? We haven't seen such a turnaround in any UTC, okay? And this is a result of a cohesive effort where everyone's, you know, singing from the same hymn sheet. Uh, as, as Gail said, you know, what's absolute, you know, our, our primary business challenge is ensuring that we have more students this year than last year. Otherwise, you know, we're not a growing business, we're a failing business, you know, and 
that's a dirty word in education. We are not a business, okay? But you know, it, it's directly linked to the income that we receive from government, to the number of teachers that we have, to the you know the paint that goes on the walls. Okay, um, so it's very very promising. We will know in two weeks uh, just how uh, much of an impact you know the digital futures program has had on the student intake. Right, you never know until all the students walk through the door. Okay, uh, the third point for me. Um, and, and please bear in mind that, that this is related to a, a very unique period in educational history, you know, on the back of, you know, two years of lockdowns and the, the tremendous upheaval that this has had on the lives of students and teachers, right? Uh, the teachers have come out of that and uh, been presented with a, with a new reality in, in what their teaching environment looks like, okay? And particularly by, by being able to understand that a data centre is not a lot of people punching data into computers. And it's not just a big warehouse with nothing in it. This is a, a seriously, highly technological, advanced engineering challenge, you know, in terms of, you know, constructing, building, operating and maintaining these facilities. This blew the teachers' minds. We have seen... Uh, <laughs> we have seen uh, a ridiculous amount of... You know, commitment from the teachers that you just you don't see these teachers are generally you know they have the, the world on their shoulders they they've got deadlines or, or whatever this level of enthusiasm is is palpable and the last time i visited the, the utc before we shut for the summer i couldn't get rid of an engineering teacher because he was telling me about all the amazing plans to build high voltage electrical uh systems and put them into a classroom because this is how we can teach the kids and show them that i said i've really really got to go and 40 minutes later <laughs> still telling me about the plans and how we're going to do it and you know for, for me this represents um it, it's a culture shift right when teachers know that they are valued and recognized and needed by industry they are not just some you know gray area of society but when real people from industry value these teachers and recognize them okay you see a different level of commitment from these teachers who generally receive very little if no recognition and they're usually on on the wrong end of you know social media or, or whatever commentary is going on these guys have had their their working lives changed um i, I think you know lastly the kids who have, have gone through this awful time, you know, have walked into a situation which wasn't, uh, it wasn't clear exactly how the year would look. You know, we're all learning. You know, I had this vision, Andrew had a vision, you know, we all had our own perspectives on what the year might look like. Um, and it's gone through a number of iterations. The students uh, have lapped it up you know, and, and they've been phenomenal. And, and as I touched on earlier, you know, the behaviour has improved. You know, this is an inner London technical college, okay? We're not surrounded by lots of grammar school kids that have been well behaved since birth. We are teaching, you know, the salt of the earth kids here. And these guys are gonna go on to be amazing engineers, okay? And the, you know, the ability to spend that time with, with mature professionals is just shaping them into the adults we need them to be that society needs and uh you know i can't thank you guys enough it, it's it's phenomenal the change uh and you know we we have other partners that have also committed you know no one can believe how good it is and until they taste it and and i just thank you all for all the efforts you've made it's been incredible thank you mike and i think you know anyone watching this i think um will really understand that this is a win 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 situation you know it's a win for the kids it's a win for the teachers it's a win for the overall utc it's a win for us as individuals to be involved it's a win for the industry so you know my final question is and and, and there is a yeah, there is a 99.9995 percent chance that this initiative will roll out to another UTC not too far away from Heathrow. So that'll show the, the proof and, uh, and we'll be making some, some announcements about that in, in, in due course, but we're pretty there. But if this initiative is gonna roll out, 
what would each of you say to any other company considering being part of the future UTC movement? And very short answers, if you like. So, Gail, I'll, I'll just go to you. Do it. Brilliant. Mike Cook? Yeah, just do it. It's the best investment you'll ever make. Wonderful. Paul? Get involved. The benefit's incredible. And finally, Ricardo? Don't hesitate. Just get it done. It's, it's just worth it. It's just worth it. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for giving up some more of your time. And I do hope the people that have a look at this are as inspired with it. Um, I must admit, every time I talk to all of you about it, and, and, and certainly my cook, I put on a hoodie, we chatted offline. You know, it is exciting. It's still the one thing I talk about. I forget to talk about all the other stuff that we're doing because it doesn't seem as important or relevant, really. Um, you know, so this is fantastic. And, you know, and of course, thank you to, you know, who aren't on the call, CBRE, um, ARC and Virtus, you know, and the new partners coming on board, because this is a game changer. This is something that we will be very proud of. Um, and, and that is important for our industry to leave something that is a true, a true legacy. So thank you very much indeed, everybody. I'll draw it to a close at that point. And I very much look forward to working with you all over the next few years to, uh, to see more year groups come through and eventually see them come into your businesses. And, and then maybe we can get some of those students on some of these presentations to give their side of the story and how it and what it's meant to them. So thank you all very much indeed. And Andrew, to win more awards, right? Your yeah, award. indeed. Yeah, yeah. We all need an award every so often. So uh, you know, and that was a, that was a great moment to see everybody, you know, sew together um, in Monaco and win something that was a collective. And uh, and I think that is fantastic. So it is really good, really, really good. So thank you very much.